As most of you probably know, I recently lost my female ghost mantis, and when I got my other two mantises, I couldn't help but get another one. I absolutely love these guys, and today I'll be setting up this one's enclosure. I got this guy a few weeks ago when I got my dead leaf mantis and my giant shield mantis. Unfortunately, we lost this one to a mist molt the other day, but on the other hand, we have our first successful molt with the ghost mantis, so that's a plus. Anyway, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Like the last two, I'll be using this custom front opening 10 gallon that I converted a little while ago. To make it, I removed the bottom of a 10 gallon aquarium, then assembled and installed a window frame mesh lid. After that, I cut a piece of glass, then installed it on the tanks with some silicone. I repeated that on the top and bottom of each tank. I then cut a wooden dowel and made a custom hinge. I attached it to the tank, as well as a handle and some magnets. Anyways, the first thing we need to take care of is the false bottom using some Leica. I added it into the vivarium in a layer that's about an inch deep. Not only will the Leco create an area where water can reside, but it'll also soak up any excess. To prevent substrate from getting through to the false bottom, I'll use some window screen mesh. I added it to the enclosure and curled it up on the edges to further prevent it from getting through. With the substrate barrier in place, it's time for the substrate. Like usual, I'm using an ABG mix made of one part cocoa fiber, one part sand, one part reptile bark, and two parts sphagnum moss. Like usual, I added it into the enclosure and sloped it up towards the back to create depth. Anyway, now that the substrate and false bottom are all taken care of, I can start scaping. For that, I have this piece of spider wood with air plants attached to it. Air plants are a really cool option for this because they can be super glued onto just about anything and still thrive. Yet again, the hardscape isn't super complicated with this one, but that's how I like to keep it. Anyways, now it's time for my favorite part, the plants. I have a bunch of different plants, but I'll primarily be using these four. Like usual, I need to prep them first. I start by removing each plant from the pot and then breaking up the roots from the soil, trying to get off as much as I can. It's important to get off as much soil as you can as it could contain other harmful insects and or parasites. I'm using pretty similar plants to the ones I used for the last two builds as I found that these plants tend to do well in these types of environments. After removing as much soil as I can from all the plant's roots, I took them outside and sprayed them down with the hose to remove any excess soil. After that, I could start planting. The first plant I added was this variegated umbrella plant towards the back middle of the terrarium. This will grow fairly large and fill in the space rather quickly, as well as provide a good variation in color and texture. Unfortunately though, this one wasn't as variegated as some of the others that I was able to get. Still, I think it looks good. The next plant I added was this fern. I place it just to the left of the driftwood. This will help to fill in the space as well as add a nice variation in texture and add a little bit of ground cover. The third plant that I added was this waffle plant towards the front right of the wood. This will help to add a pop of color to the vivarium. I lost the footage, but I planted an ivy towards the back right. Anyway, no tank is complete without leaf litter. I added it to the enclosure, making sure to cover as much of the substrate as possible. This will help make things feel more natural and cohesive. Now it's time for some finishing touches, aka botanicals. These will help to further enhance that natural feel. With the finishing touches done and the tank complete, I moved it onto the stand. With the tank on the stand, I introduced the mantis to its new home. With the third and final mantis enclosure complete, I can now enjoy all three mantises together. Like the other ones, I think this one turned out really good. Even though it's simple, I like to keep it that way with the mantises. In all honesty, this one is probably my least favorite out of the three, mostly because of the plant coverage. 
I feel like I could have added more plants, and I probably will further down the road. Either way, I still like the look of it, and it'll provide an adequate home for the mantis. I know these have kind of been some simple and smaller projects, but honestly, I've really enjoyed them. I've been keeping mantises for quite a long time now, and I've kept quite a few different species. As a kid, I was endlessly fascinated by them, so to be keeping them like this now is truly a dream come true.